This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another exciting episode of For Reform Friday where we play some random video game and today's game is called First Feudal. It's similar to the likes of RimWorld so it's like top down colony builder simulation type shenanigans. What we're going to do is because it's a relatively slow moving game, we're going to start a new single player game and then I'm going to load a saved game that I was already playing so that you can see the difference. So when you see the like change in colony and the jump and it's like not the same map and all that, then you understand why and what we're doing here. So we're just going to do new game because I kind of I want you to see the beginnings of the game and then I want you to see some more advanced gameplay. So we've got a few different options here. You can change your feudal name. You have different Difficulty, map size, Iron Man mode option, show tutorial. I'm actually going to click that off here. And then we have overall difficulty. That's your setting right there. So I guess if you change these settings here, it changes the overall difficulty. Yeah, so that makes the difficulty even easier. Uh, that's... So we're gonna, and I guess if we were to select Iron Man, nope, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't really change the diff. I wonder why they have this. I mean, I guess maybe they're gonna add additional options here that are gonna change the overall difficulty. Oh, here we go. So we click detail down at the bottom. So if we go single player, new game, there's this here where it says detailed, this is okay. So this allows for the change in the difficulty here. I see, I didn't notice this right from the get go. So like we take that down, okay. All right, and then we're gonna crank that up. Oh, this is actually cool because we can change a lot of different little things here. Anyway, we're just gonna go with that. We're gonna go new game. You get to pick two starting options here, the stone throne or the copper sword. Uh, this gives you a, a leg up in being able to defend your colony because attackers do show up. And then we have the stone throne. This gives you additional happiness. Uh, I'm just gonna go with the additional happiness because I've already figured out how to break the normal, well, the starting AI anyway. So when we have guys show up, I know how to deal with them. So from what I can tell, the enemies don't actually like start to colonize on the map. They just show up at one side of the map and then run towards your base and start attacking you. So when you first start, you got to pick your location where you want to set up shop here. And I, I want a location with a lot of trees and next to the water and next to stone. And um, can we see full map? Here we go. We can see full map. So it looks like all the stone is down here. All the trees are right here. Uh, let's go back out. We continue. I'm guessing like right around in here won't be too bad. They don't have to go too far. Yeah. So I think like right in here. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to build. We got to place down our main square. And uh, yeah, I think we're just going to go right, right there. That's good enough. Let's get started. So here we are. This is our person. This little dude shows up. He's got a cart. He parks it. We get two guys to start with. You get to assign them, well, you have to assign them professions. So we're going to start with a woodcutter. And uh, this guy is also going to be a woodcutter because we're going to need a lot of wood right from the get go. And we can come over here to our build menu. You can see we got a couple of options here. We can build two of these. And then we go back to our build menu. We're also going to need a carpenter's workbench. And we're just going to, oh, a lot of the wood's over here. So I think I'm just going to place this right here like so. And then we'll come over here and we don't want to build a kitchen yet. We do want a workbench for tools. You can see we also have a workbench for weapons option. We're just going to start with this little bit here first. So we hit R to rotate and we're just going to place that right there. So they'll make the planks here and then they'll use the planks and the sticks to make this. And uh, then we want a chest. If you put the chest next to it, you can see, well, we got to rotate it because that, that little gold arrow is their point of access. They that, that needs to be in an area where your people can get to it. But then you can see that there's two arrows back and forth. That means this chest is direct directly connected to this workbench. So if there's resources in here that the workbench needs, then they can pull them directly out of this chest. So we're just going to put that like that. And we're going to put that like that. And then we're just going to put a couple of chests all right, like that. Okay, so now what we can do is we're going to wait. We're going to speed it up here. You can see we got different game speeds down here. We're going to let these guys harvest for a little while. 
And luckily enough, we just got a new peasant to show up, which is exactly what we need because we have to hit V. We got to come over here and we got to make this dude a builder because we need a builder. And if we take a look here, you can see that our next peasant shows up in two minutes and 30 some seconds. If our overall happiness is high, we get them more frequently. So if it's more than 50, the speed gaining experience is also increased. So happiness plays into a lot of different factors here. And now that we have our artisan table built, we can select that we want planks to be made. Now you have a couple of different options here. First, you can select how many you can say craft until X. So that means they'll always just keep 20. So if you use 10, they'll craft 10 more so that we always have 20 or you can have them just craft an exact amount. Uh, we're just going to leave it on craft until X so that they will just keep 20. We're also going to select this as well. We want to keep 20 of those at all times too. Now we're here on the throne. We can get up and move around. We can just hit E when we're highlighted over that. We just put our cursor over it. So we can hit E to set down, hit E to get up. We can interact with things. So we can come over here and do this. We can come up here. We can craft the things ourselves. So we can come over here and just start crafting that if we want to. Uh, our guys are sleeping right now. I'm going to just kind of hang out here and patiently wait. We can also make this dude, we can give him a different profession here or secondary profession because right now he's standing around doing nothing. So right now he's a builder and a mover. These guys are already woodcutters and movers. So what we're going to do is we're going to change him to a builder and an artisan. So he will work this bench when there is nothing to build if there is something to do in this bench. We also have our tech tree over here. So this is your, your sciences. It's kind of weird how they did this. So like this has to fill up and then we can go in one of these directions to, to pick one of them. Then those fill up that bar there and we can do the same thing. What fills the bar is the stuff you see there. So the stuff that's listed there under unlocks the craft as we craft those things, that technology bar fills up. So for example, what we can do, um, I don't know if I, if I can actually craft anything here. Let's take a look. Uh, let's grab some wood out of here and then we'll come over here to this. And if we go to craft and then we click our sciences here and we highlight over this as we craft them, you can see we're crafting the planks so that this, the science is, is going up there for the primitive technology. Once that hits 250, we should be able to select one of these other ones here. You'll also notice that we have a bunch of different bars down here and everybody has the different bars. If I highlight over it there, you can see what they do, health, stamina, and fullness. So as we craft here, our stamina will slowly go down and we'll have to stop and let it rebuild. So the chest here is done. I want this chest. I don't want them putting random stuff in this chest. So we're going to come over here. We're going to filter this chest. This chest is only going to be wood items. And then we can just save that over here. They have finished the workbench for the tools. So what we're going to do, we're just going to have uh, two of those at all times, two of those at all times, two of those at all times, two of those at all times and two of those at all times, and two of those at all times. We should also have torches because it helps us work more steadily through the night, but I'm not going to worry about those. We can counteract that by putting bonfires around. you also notice that when we're setting on this throne, it's the same as when we're sleeping. So our overall stamina is now raising back up as you use stuff. And as it refills, it will, it'll slowly decrease how much it will, it will refill until it gets to the point where it won't refill the total at all. So you have to sleep in order to fix that problem. When we're setting on the throne, it counts as sleeping. So I've loaded into my other game here. And as you can see, it's currently nighttime and uh, we're going to unpause it here and we can see around the area here where our campfires are. We also apparently lose our people as, as the time goes on. Um, and we lose our dude here if we go out as the time goes on. So we need those campfires. We're just gonna hang out here and uh, patiently wait until time goes by and it's then in its daytime. Oh, we have an enemy caravan. So we, it says, uh, these little things pop up every now and then with like different things. I've gotten enemies, I've gotten a bard and I've gotten an old man with like a carriage. So it says the enemy caravan passes near our village. Caravan carries goods or gold, but is guarded by serious warriors. 
what should we do? And I think we're just going to let them go. I don't want to, I don't want to fool with trying to fight them. If it was daytime, I may have considered it, but it's nighttime and I can't see anything. So I'm not going to worry about it. If you do want to move around at nighttime, you can hold a torch if you only have a single handed weapon. So you can see here, I have a club and an ax and I hold the torch in my off hand. So when I walk around at nighttime, you can see at nighttime. And this is the first time it got this dark. Uh, it got dark before, but it wasn't this dark. This is so dark that I needed a torch. So I don't know if it just hadn't hit day or nighttime yet, or if it's a specific season that's causing it to be this dark and it just doesn't do that right at the beginning. Not 100% sure. It didn't really go into detail about that. It does have a tutorial like you saw there at the beginning that I unchecked and I did play through the tutorial. Uh, it's, it's just not a super in-depth. It just teaches you the basics of the game and then kind of just lets you go. You also eventually get the option to unlock the ability to build walls in a house. As you see here, we built a little house and I actually, I think I need to, I don't know if we need floor here or not, but I'm gonna place a little floor right there at the doorway. So this helps to increase the happiness. If we go over here to the build menu, you can see here that uh, it says a wood wall is used for protection and happiness. It covers enclosed area by roof within a radius of two meters. It's also important to keep your people fed. As you can see here, I have a bunch of farming going on. We're currently harvesting pumpkins and we have the kitchen here. You can take a look. This is all the different stuff we can. Oh, actually, I should always make sure that we have some flax seed. Always keep 10. Yep, that sounds good. Um, and we currently have the ability to make the different things that you see here and that shows you what it takes to make said things. I just got everything queued up to always just keep an amount of them. Your main character that you play as well also has to eat. So uh, let's just eat a little bit of soup here and then always put the wood bowl back because then they, they reuse the wooden bowl. Uh, let's eat one more. All these cows and stuff walking around, you can kill them and farm them. Uh, let's see here. How much do we got? Let's go over here and, and take out one of these. Uh, well, I think we need some, some wool, so we're going to take out one of these sheep here. Come here, sheep. Combat's a little clunky, but, I mean, it's kind of... It's, it's it's a top-down combat. It's kind of what you'd expect. You just kind of kind of wail at the sheep there as we're doing with our... Yeah, I don't know how... There we go. It's a, it's a little wonky, but it works. One more hit should take him out. I don't want to hit that other one. I just want to hit him. There we go. And then you just look at him and hit E, and then you can harvest the stuff off of him. Uh, let's, you know what? Let's take out one more. We already started to hit this one. Let's keep hitting him. We can eventually get to the point where we can farm these guys. I'm not 100% sure how to do that yet. Come here. Come here, sheep. I'm trying to murder you. Come here. One more. One more. One more. Oh, I can't click. I'm out of stamina. One more. There we go. All right, so we're going to take all this stuff back to the house. Got a bunch of meat, which is nice, and a bunch of wool as well. So I did unlock the ability to, so if we come over here and take a look in our sciences, we did unlock the ability for sheep breeding, so we got the slaughterhouse and the fence. Let's take a look and see what those look like here. So there's the slaughterhouse, and uh, there's the fence. Cheap way to fence in domestic animals can be built over floodplain. Doesn't cover adjacent area by a roof. Has low durability. Sheep breeding. All right. Well, let's see. Uh, what does it take to build that? What do we need resource wise? Just some sticks. Okay. So let's uh, let's see. Where do we want to put our sheep pen? I kind of like that everything's kind of going back this way a little bit. So let's just put in. Well. Let's expand over here a little bit. Let's go this way. So let's just do this. Let's go out like that. And then like that. It's going to take a ton of sticks. And then like that. Do we got to put a door in? I wonder. Should we? Do we? We don't have any type of gate or anything. Eh, we'll just do this. Let's rotate it. Oh, I can't put it there because, okay, there we go. We'll just do that. That do the thing? Hopefully that does the thing. We're going to go through a ton of sticks. I don't even know how you get them in there. All right, let's build a slaughterhouse as well. We should have all the stuff to do that. Let's just put that right here by the, by the sheep pen. There we go. All right, so we got a group of guys here, and uh, I'm going to show you how to do the, the combat here. It's relatively funny. So if they're not ranged combat, you can kind of just do that, and then you shift to sprint backwards. You wait till they get close. 
you hit them, you, you shift the sprint backwards. Uh, we're kind of low on stamina, so this could be iffy. And if you get it just right and you get your your timing down, you can actually not take any hits and take on multiple foes at one time. I need to sleep, but we'll see how this goes. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be just this for a hot minute until we kill all of these guys. Uh oh, my weapon broke. That's not good. Uh, okay, we have an axe on us, so we can swap to the axe. It's not quite as good as the club, but it'll be all right. Oh, it's going to screw up my timing. That's not good at all. Maybe we can get the club from this guy. He's probably got a club. So we look at him and hit E. He does not even have a club. He's got some food that I'm going to transfer over to my inventory. And this. Oh, crap. I'm getting a lot of hits. Uh, let's transfer that as well. Okay, so while we're moving, we're going to hit I. We're going to eat that food, equip that because it's more armor. We did take a couple of hits there, but they don't hit really hard. So, oh crap, oh crap. Uh, but if they start beating on me, it's not good. Nope, that's not good. This is going to so screw up my timing. I'm super slow. No, I can't sprint. I can't sprint. Stamina, stamina. Oh, this is not good. This is not good. This could go absolutely horribly. If you die, it's it's GG. Let's try call to arms and see what happens here. Will my people come to um, order to attack them with Z? Um, I don't know. It doesn't give you a lot of feedback, so we'll see what happens here. Yeah, get in there. Get in there and attack. Oh, look at that guy running. Oh, I really need a freaking club. All right, can I get a club from this guy? Where's that dude's club? The problem is I have no club and I have no stamina. Okay, all right, we got that guy. He's running away. I don't I don't think I can catch him. If I could catch him and get another hit on him, it would be fantastic. Oh, yeah, 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 there we go. 2v1. Oh, he got stunned. Come on, pitchfork him. Pitchfork him. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so let's grab all of his stuff. I, um... I have a serious problem. Let's just eat all of that. Okay. I think the problem is uh, I have too much crap on me. So they should go get all of that stuff. We should be all right there. Yeah, they're going to take care of the bodies. We need to go back and rest up because we have like zero stamina. We also need to get a hold of a new club somewhere. So let's go over here and let's empty all of this stuff that we have currently in our inventory into here. Yep. Get rid of all of that. The dude had a bunch of copper ore. Let's, uh, oh, that's completely full. Is this one full? Almost full. Let's put a new helmet in there. And, uh, let's go over here and check these. I don't have these sorted. They're just, like, anything chests. So, yeah, there we go. We'll put all the meat in there. And eventually, somebody will do something with the meat. Okay, so we should have, always have clubs around. Here. I don't want any of those clubs. Where's the good clubs? I'm just gonna make my own good club. So, what do I need for a club? Let's take a look. So you can change the quality of stuff by changing how long it takes to make it. So you can see here that it I have this set to slow. So we just need a log. So let's grab some logs. I don't know where all of my good clubs are, but I'm just going to make my own. All right, well, we just had an event where it said a wolf is nearby. I don't know where the wolf is at. I chose to just kind of ignore it. Um, this could end up being a bad situation. It could end up coming over here and killing all of the wildlife. I don't know what's going to happen. It's the first time I've had it pop up and say anything about a wolf. I don't even see it. Usually, if I do this, does it take me to it? Left mouse button to select the target. I'm doing that and nothing is happening. Okay, well, I have no idea then. Oh, wait. Here it is. Here it is. Okay, it's down here. It's doing the thing now. Oh, he's down here. It's doing stuff. Okay, can we swap to the club? Are we on the club? We're on the club. Okay, let's see if we can do this. We might die. Come here, wolf. Come here. Stop killing all the sheep. Can we chase? We can't chase him. It's nighttime, so we're slowed down and my torch burnt out. So I don't know how this is going to go. Watch him hit like a freaking truck. Oh, yeah, take that. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Okay, we're just in it. We're just in it. Holy crap, the wolf is strong. We're going to die. I can't outrun him. It's nighttime and I can't outrun him and we're going to die. Sprint, sprint, <laughs> sprint away from the wolf. <laughs> Holy crap. Is he going to come in? If he comes into the village, it'll be a bit of a different situation because the light allows me to move faster. We're going to set in our throne. We're just going to, we're going to hang out here. 
Yeah, peasants, you go deal with the wolf. Somebody go deal with him. At some point, we're going to have to. I bet kiting is super freaking easy in this game if I could ever just unlock bows, but I can't seem to get to the point where I can unlock bows. The only thing that does it is the stone block. You got to make so many stone blocks. Uh, yeah, just craft, uh, craft another, you know what? Just craft 100 of them. Will that get me there? Yeah, just do that. Just do it. But unfortunately, I have a ton of footage to get through for this, uh, so I think we're going to wrap it up here. It's a pretty cool little game. If you like games where it's like top-down, colony, management, survival-type situations, you'll probably enjoy this game. It's kind of easy going a little bit. It's got the random events that just happen every now and then, but uh, for the most part, it's just kind of easy going. And as you saw there at the beginning, you can kind of tailor it to however you want it to, to play out. Like, you can just do full easy going, easy, super, super easy mode if you want, to where you're just building your colony, or you can play a little more hardcore if you want to do that. So if you like what you see and you want to check it out, I'll put a link for it down in the description. All right, that is going to wrap it up for this episode. I want to give a big thank you to my patrons for making this episode possible. Y'all are absolutely amazing people. If you'd like to join my Lee Crew Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.